what you all are seeing. I'm just seeing a bunch of little faces pop up here or there, but. You have a spotlight video on you, Maharani. So. <laughs> yeah. um, so I have, I do this art all the time. Like I said, it's something that's really relaxing for me. I can do it while I'm watching TV or not paying attention to somebody bothering me on a Zoom meeting. Ah. Um, so, and I have tons of examples. I'm trying to pull a couple up right now. Um, so this is what an end product could look like. Doesn't have to, it can look like whatever you want it to look like. But what I want to draw your attention to is that wherever two colors are intersecting again, it is outlined in black. So black is one of the last things you're going to do on it, on the on the painting or the, the art. I start out my process usually using the lightest of the colors that I have selected. So for this picture, I'm going to use yellow, um, I have like a lime green, a turquoise and a blue. And that's so perfect. And I started just making random shapes. I don't know what this is, ladies and gentlemen, and, and anybody who identifies as non-binary or fluid. I have no idea what's happening on this paper and I don't want to. That's my whole thing is I'm just letting whatever wants to come out of me come out and I'm drawing random shapes and drawing random shapes next to it with a different color or drawing the same shape next to it in a different color so I can come back. But I usually start out by taking, because of this picture, the yellow and drawing a bunch of different shapes randomly all over the page and then taking another color and doing the same thing. It's, I'm not sure what kind of markers you all are using. I have Crayola, the very love of my life Crayolas. I, I work with children, so it doesn't stain all of my stuff. Um, and I always let people know that it has a broadside and the point. It's easier to fill in whatever your shapes are with the broadside. It keeps you from going back and forth a lot like this. If you want to do all of that work, have at it. It's your business. But um, the broadside really helps for fewer strokes, um, for not saturating the paper as much. But again, your choice. I also, it's a, it's a pro tip, but also it's up to you. Um, the smaller details that you do are harder to outline in black in the end. So I have students that sometimes do like tiny little polka dots. It's your choice. You can absolutely do that. That's not a problem. However, remember if you're having another color around that, you have to outline that in black. So I usually don't get too small. This is an example. So those are usually about as small as I'll get, stuff like that, because it gets hard to, to outline them if it's really, really fine detail work. I have a couple where I have gotten smaller, as you can see, um, but also it's only surrounded by black in those little spaces just because it's really hard to um, outline the two and define the two colors without finer tip markers or doing more detailed work. And for me, because I like this work to be really easy and something I can do without having to think so much, I like to keep the shapes bigger, but feel free to do however you want. I always tell people art is subjective. Sometimes you love what you do when somebody else hates it. Sometimes you hate what you do when somebody else loves it. Um, I, like I said, I work with students of all ages, but currently I'm working with little kids and I'm like, if you like it, that's all that matters. And I tell them, I don't have to like your work. And sometimes I won't, and that's okay. 
if you like it, somebody else will like it. And if you don't like it, somebody still else will like it. So you don't have to worry about it. There's no mistakes here. If, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So at this point, you can hopefully you've picked out your colors and just start drawing shapes, whatever shapes you want. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be a real shape. It could be amoeba-like, it's fine. And I think that one of the things that people worry about is, is it going to be acceptable or is it right? there's no right answer to this so you have no problems here um just get in there and let the day go on the page that's how i feel about it and i don't know about you all but i had a day so i'm gonna let that go on the page and see what i can come up with um one of my favorite things about this art is because i don't know what's gonna happen um I'm always surprised by what the end result is going to be. And one of the only rules I have about creating art um, in my space is the people that are in my space are not allowed to say, say what they see until I say I'm finished because I feel like it clouds what I'm going to do. It jumps into my brain and then I, oh, you said you saw a fish and now I'm drawing fish all over the place. But I just wanna see what's gonna happen. And then at the end, I hold the piece up and I'm like, okay, what do you see this way or this way or this way or this way? And the answer is always surprised. Sometimes people see things I didn't see. Sometimes I recognize right away what was coming out of me, like the bad day or the amazing day that I had. Um, I did some art one year watching the Olympics. It's my favorite thing. And all of the art had Olympic references, not because I was meaning to, but after I looked at it all, I was like, oh, that's a runner or that's a whatever. It's all super abstract because I'm an abstract person. I don't know if you could tell, um, but it uh, that for me is the rule because I don't want to be influenced. But um, when you're finished, you'll be surprised what you see at the end, what comes up for you. I always let people know that um, the black marker at the end really um, tidies up the picture. So even if you feel like you've made a mistake, which again, you really can't, um, that black marker can come in and fill in, cover up, uh, tidy up any of those spaces where you feel like, oh, this doesn't look the way I wanted it to, or it's not as neat as you wanted it to. So that that's the little tip slash trick at the end. I, for the black marker part, I, I have elevated <laughs> past my lovely Crayola markers to a Sharpie. And the reason that I do that is because it dries immediately. So it doesn't if I wanna add a different color after the fact, it doesn't bleed into the colors. Um, but for, for a lot of the pictures that I've done, I just had the regular Crayola black marker, um, but I was going through them pretty quickly. And this also makes it a little easier for me to, to not pay as much attention while I'm doing it. Um, I, also always recommend a scratch piece of paper underneath because you're not leaving any white. Um, you're gonna be going all the way to the ends of that paper. And unless you don't care what you're drawing on top of, the scratch piece of paper, make sure that you're not drawing on top of your table or the book or the clipboard that you're using. So. This is one of my scratch pieces of paper. It becomes its own art. Um, I use whatever, this is actually a list of, I don't know, vegetables of, or something, <laughs> a shopping list or whatever, but now it has all of those end pieces. I also test color combinations to see if I like what colors I'm putting together. Um, I am a colorist, color really matters to me and um, making sure that the colors work for me 
is important. I personally um, get offended by colors that seem to clash. Um, so I, it, it hurts me, it really does. So I work hard at figuring out what colors I enjoy looking at together in a three or a four color blend for this particular art. Um, so I, I'll just, I have a bunch of different sample and some are bigger or smaller. Um, like I said, some only have three colors. This is a three color example, plus the black and some have four. Um, I find that with three colors, I have to think a little bit more about um, how I'm putting those colors and shapes together because I want to spread the color out throughout the page. But depending on what it is that you're doing with it, um, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't obstruct the, the final outcome. So as you can see, this only has three colors, but I found different ways to make sure that the color is spread throughout and it's not super heavy on one color versus another. But four colors gives you a little bit more of, a, of an opportunity to break. I picked these colors out prior to the class starting, but I had already started a piece maybe weeks ago and walked away from it because, you know, it's just something I do on my free time. And I must be feeling these colors because I picked the same colors again and then realized that my sample piece was also those colors. So I guess I'll work on this piece. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, protocol is about people talking back, asking questions, but feel free to, if you have a question or if you want to have a conversation about art or this kind of art specifically, feel free to chime in. Zoom is an interesting medium and it's weird to just talk to yourself. Um, so I'm happy to have conversation back and forth, talk about the aesthetic of the art form or other kinds of art forms. Um, any questions that you have about what it is that we're doing specifically, feel free to, to chime in. I think you all have the ability to, I don't know if it's been locked or not. It's not. Um, if anyone has questions for Maharani on the chat, um, we can also, you know, I can say it if you're shy, but um, that too. yeah, like this is a time to just kind of de-stress a little bit, do something. It's not forcing you to think <laughs> too heavily. Part of this. So Maharani, I, you said to use the lighter color first. Should, so are you saying like when we pick like our lighter color, do we finish our work with that? For example, I have yellow. So um, what I do is I start with that lighter color because uh, the, the markers bleed into each other mm -hmm. sometimes. And so I, if I know I'm going to use, and I am using yellow as well, yellow, I'll put a bunch of different random shapes in yellow all over the page to start and then take the next lightest color and the next and the next. But that's not to say that you don't go back to that color because one of the things that you recognize while you're doing the art is that um, you'll see where, like I said, this color needs to be filled in over here. It's too blue heavy over here. This is, it's, it's missing this. And you just kind of feel it organically. So you can definitely go back. You should be going back. It's just a start. It's great to build from the lightest to the darkest and then go back in and fill in. And even when you get to the black part, the outlining part, um, a lot of times what I'll end up doing, I think I have an example of a piece is, so I've gotten to a certain place on this piece 
And so I've started to outline everything in black. But uh, as I start to outline things in black, I see spaces where I can add more of the three or four colors that I'm using. And so I'll add another shape or um, in another color that fits. So it adds more and more and more as I go along. So in certain pieces, it'll be more black background heavy. Mm -hmm. And in other pieces, black will really just look like an outline. So let me see if I can find an example. Luckily, I do way too much of this art. <laughs> Makes me happy. So in this piece, this example, black is really just an outline. There's not that much black going on. But in, let's see, just had a piece and I lost it. One of these pieces, black is really predominant um, because it, me, I, I, what, whenever I was doing the piece, felt like I didn't want to add any more of the colors to it. I don't know what I did with that particular piece. Oh, like this piece. So black is really, really prominent in the background versus All just right. an outline. But any way you go about it, what does Tabitha Brown say? That's your business or whatever. So do do whatever makes you feel good. Whatever is making you feel like, yeah, I'm really vibing with that. Or maybe you're not. This piece I started a while ago and then I stopped because I wasn't vibing with it, but I'll finish it eventually. And who knows what it's going to end up looking like. So yeah. I am having this feeling. I'm like rejecting my piece already. Like I can, I know. That, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this because we're so not used to coloring, like you know, without without the lines. Yep. Kids yeah. always say, "Oh, I messed up," or "I don't like it," or "It's it's wrong." And I'm like, "Guess what? It's not. It's not. It's transitioning, and mm -hmm. you never know what you're going to end up with in the end. And that's the hardest thing for a lot of people to get. It's hard for kids to get, but it's even harder for adults to get." that you're not making a mistake. There's no wrong answers. That's the beauty of all art, really. Whatever's supposed to be there will be there in the end. So you can really just let that go. And when you let that idea go that there's a right and a wrong or a good and a bad, it, this, it takes all the stress off. I've decided personally, I don't really wanna take art classes um, because they're gonna teach me this is the technique and you have to do it this way. And blah, blah. Well, I'm, I'm rigid in almost all parts of my life, but in art, I'm free because I don't know any rules. I'm not breaking anything, I'm just being. So don't feel caught up in what the final piece is actually gonna look like because it's gonna be whatever it's supposed to be. And you can't mess it up. You you really can't mess it up. If you got to the end and you found that you covered the whole paper in black, well, then guess what? That's what it was supposed to look like. And that's okay. That's fine. You, I think we've been poisoned. We've been told from little kids that if a tree doesn't look like the tree that is outside, it's not right. If it the boy doesn't look like a boy, it's not right, whatever. But um, I am an artist. I have sold artwork. I have hung in all sorts of places. And if you ask me to draw you, Mona, mm -hmm. you might be offended with what <laughs> I come up with because I can't draw you uh -huh. in the way that you see yourself in the mirror. I would never be able, these, this, this picture on the back of my, my background here, I. I can't do that. That's not the kind of art that I do. Now, if you ask me to draw my interpretation, I would draw your essence and it might look like this. And you go, <laughs> oh, okay. And I could tell you why, but <laughs> that I think we need to let go of the right and wrong and good and bad of it all. Just, mm -hmm. just be, just be free. Mm -hmm. You can't, you're not getting a grade for this. <laughs> You could get some money for it. People buy all sorts of stuff. I was telling my students today about some art 
that I saw and I was, I personally was like, really? No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> this guy canned his poop and sold it for like $25,000. What? He called it art. <laughs> so literally crap is art. So, <laughs> you're all right. Whatever you do, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another guy threw a handful of Italian candy into a corner and said, this is my art. I saw that in high school and I told my mother, look at my room. It is art. She said, no, it's not. But I tried. <laughs> I tried. You know, it's fine. Yes, we all have to try, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do is okay. That, that thing that's nagging in the back of your head telling you that it's wrong, that's that matrix ego nonsense that mm -hmm. is, needs to be shut down anyway and hold you back from all of the things in your life anyway. So shut that off and just scribble all over the page and be as free as you want to, because that's the beauty in it. And that's the lesson in it. And that's the love in it. Thank you for that. I don't think I've used markers. So markers, okay. If, you're, if you live on campus, you have the Crayola markers. If you got one of the kits, I have not used like markers like these since like elementary school. Somehow they I, made me, they made us graduate from these. They, and so when I started art, this is the art that I was doing art mm -hmm. like this and with markers. And I felt like I wasn't an artist. I was like, nobody's going to take me seriously because I'm using markers or I'm using crayons or I'm using, you know, Crayola crayon, uh, colored pencils. And that's not what real artists do. And then I, again, will remind you of a guy who pooped in a can. Real artists <laughs> do whatever they want. And I had, can't tell you how many times people have told me, oh my gosh, your, your marker art should be made into fabric. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I wear a lot of African fabric and uh, this would definitely be my aesthetic. So mm -hmm. it's still, it's, it's art no matter the medium and markers i just think are a really good gateway it's my mm -hmm. gateway the gateway <laughs> my gateway medium <laughs> it, it, it i have i have i still come back to markers but i use all sorts of things now i use um my regular is is acrylic paint but um because i'm an abstract found and recyclable and afrocentric artist I use all sorts of stuff. This is my way into hoarding because anything <laughs> and everything can be art. So that end of the, the toilet paper roll tube, um, better believe that all my family and friends saved them for me um, because it can be artwork. It can be incorporated into art. I've used table salt in art. Um, I use paper bowls and plastic forks and knives in my paintings. And this is stuff that's actually sold. Um, not that I sell a whole lot. I don't want you all to get the idea that I um, can retire on this yet, but <laughs> I have definitely um, turned trash into treasure at points because I can see the potential in it, even when I can't see what it's going to be. I just know, oh, that's interesting. And maybe I can use it later. I save these scrap pieces of paper and maybe I don't use this, although I think that I could if I wanted to, um, but I, I'll ball it up and use it as stuffing in one of my paintings or one of the trash sculptures that I make. So I save all sorts of stuff and you can use all sorts of stuff. So markers are really elevated when you think about some of the stuff that I've used, which is literally, oh, this is some old foil. I'm going to, mm -hmm. this is a broken earring. I'm going to, I've used, I don't do this anymore. So I don't use food items that aren't already food that I can't eat because I don't want to waste food like that anymore. But I used to use beans and rice because again, I've worked with little kids too and it's tactile. Um, but now if, if it's not already in my art supply kit, 
I don't use food just because there are people that need food and I shouldn't be making art out of it when they could be eating it. But uh, <laughs> other than that, really anything, a pair of old jeans with a hole in it that I can't wear anymore. Guess I'm going to use some of those pieces in some artwork. Um, so feel free to, when you get past this workshop, look at the world differently because everything can be art. Um, I use palm fronds and make African masks from the street. So really it's, mm -hmm. it's up to your imagination. And it's really, really, really um, lovely to create something out of nothing. And to have people look at it and go, oh my gosh, I would have never thought that was a paper plate. That looks like a hand carved African mask. Yep. It's <laughs> not folks, but it can, you can transform your whole aesthetic with whatever's around. Anything can be your medium. Let's see. I would also absolutely love to see where people are in their process. So if you want to, you know, chime in and hold up your piece, if you're feeling brave or not brave, but going to do it anyway, um, <laughs> I'd love to see it. I think it's really interesting to see how different people interpret this kind of art um, mm -hmm. through their, their selves. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is lightly draw a shape on a piece of paper and photocopy it and hand that same piece of paper out to a whole class of people. And so they all start with the same shape, but where they end is so completely different. And it's beautiful to see what people come up with so we're all starting with the same materials, four or five colors, you know, three, three colors in black or four colors in black and a piece of paper. And it's really interesting to see what aesthetic you show up with because I guarantee you my wall is papered in my, my rooms that I've worked in. They're layered, they're like wallpaper all the way across from my art and my students' art. And you can see what my art is. Like a lot of the time people can tell which ones are mine, but looking at how different everybody else's is, is really, really beautiful. It turns into this really beautiful mosaic graffiti wall of, of marker art, abstract marker art. So I, again, would love to see what you all have been coming up with. You can go okay. fast. Or slow. Anyone, anyone brave right now to show the group? This is what I've been doing. I've been working Ooh. with some like soft shapes, but I tried to put like a harsh line because I feel like right now I'm into like flowy. That's cool. Than... I love the color combinations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I want to get some more marker colors because I want to expand because I really do just use Crayola. So I have like 16 colors to work <laughs> from. But I, what would I do with 100? I don't know. I'd lose my mind, I think, but I'd have a good time doing it. <laughs> Anyone else want to share their work in progress? It's all right if you don't. Mine, I'm not sure. I think I'm clashing. I don't think <laughs> the purple is, <laughs> I'm trying, it's try, it looks like, yeah, the purple is driving me crazy now after I really wanted to use purple, but we'll see how it flows. <laughs> yeah, you know what, sometimes, this is why I use a tester sheet for mine, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm deciding what colors look best or whatever, but you'll be surprised when you add that black in, mm -hmm. how it blends or binds the, the picture together. Um, and that thing that is driving you a little crazier will maybe be more harmonious to you afterwards. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm a big, um, lover of purple. So yeah. 
I, I don't personally have a problem with it, but I, I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna touch the markers and see which one I'm vibing with right now. <laughs> and those are the colors that I went with. And you might find that there's a um a reason after the fact, after you've done everything. Mm -hmm. Um I noticed that I tend to use certain colors more than others as I was setting up for this. Originally, I was thinking I wanted to use orange and then I started going for like my, I have, this is, this is what I live with. I have a Ziploc bag full of markers and another one and like all my orange markers are like dead. They're, they're like, bro, you've used them too many times. <laughs> they're so dry. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess orange is not the color today. So, and, and then there are other colors that I don't use hardly ever. I have a peach marker and I rarely use peach and I just started incorporating peach into things. And I was like, oh, I kind of like it. I, all right, I wouldn't have thought that I did. Or gray, I don't use that one very often, uh, but I use red, orange and purple a whole lot. I use yellow quite a bit as well. What I end up loving to do is after I um, have so many of them, I put them in order based on the color flow of it. As if at least one of the colors matches the uh, picture before, then they can go together, but I start seeing patterns. So when I tell you I have a lot, this is barely a handful of what's on my uh, side right now of, of pictures that I have that I sit when I'm at work and the people at work are sitting in a meeting with me talking about nonsense. Um, I'm, I'm making art and making myself feel better. <laughs> you were the doodler. <laughs> uh, I am definitely the doodler. Um, or when the kids are doing whatever, um, art that they're doing or homework time and they don't need my help. I am making a beautiful picture for myself to paper my walls. My, my goal is to cover my entire classroom wall in, in this as a background. I, I asked for the kids to help. And so I have some of that, but I've definitely done a lot of work myself. The uh, black marker, when you start putting that on, um, you might get to a point where you can change a shape. Maybe you decided that you didn't like the way something fit in. So, um, you know, blacking it out, blacking part of that color out and changing the shape of that initial thing is something that the black marker helps with. Also, um when you're doing your black marker one of the things that i do you don't have to but this is one of the things that i do is decide on how thick or thin i want the the lines around things to be to keep the flow kind of the same so um you'll notice that the lines for the most part, unless it's a big blacked out area, are kind of are, are around the same thickness all the way around. Um, and that helps with the aesthetic in my opinion. But again, this is up to you. So maybe you like the, the lines getting thick and thin throughout, or you just want them thin all the way throughout. That's totally fine. You get to decide. There's like I said, no wrong answers there. You just get to pick how it feels for you. This one, most of the lines are thicker, but then there's a couple that are 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 thin throughout. So it's it's a a choice you get to make. Um, talking more than I'm drawing. Luckily, I can catch up kind of quick. I noticed that I do a lot of the same shapes. Um, 
and sometimes I have to um, I like to look at other things in the room maybe they're on TV maybe they're just in the room and and see a different shape that I might incorporate to give me a little break because you'll notice that your style is similar throughout or I'll break a shape up with another color to give it a little extra interest so I just drew this this I don't know ovaly type shape and to break it up I'm probably going to add either well, I think what I want to do is add a circle, maybe add a couple circles. I happen to really love circles. They, I don't know, resonate with me. Maybe they resonate with my face shape and my body shape. <laughs> so um, I'm all about circles and a lot of my art has circles in it. Um, but it also helps break up what I, you know, find I do a lot of the similar shapes. I can add shapes within the shape or around the shape. Does anyone else want to share their art piece where you're at right now? Yes, I can share it. Okay, oh, awesome. But, <laughs> this is mine. I'm just doing Oh, random. that's cool. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, okay. I can see it. I can see it. Well, I can, can yeah. Yes, I can see it. I mean, like, yeah, from. from I only have like a couple people on my screen, so I can't see it, unfortunately. <laughs> or, I, so or I would probably be saying something. There we go. Okay, now I can see. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just. That's the point. Go with the flow. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the point. I don't know what I'm doing either. Okay. <laughs> I love all of your intersecting shapes. That's really cool. I feel like all mine are like super far apart, but it's so interesting to see everyone else's style. I agree. Oh, there we go. I'm interested to know if anyone um does any other kinds of art and if so what kind of art they do i do a lot of mediums um i think i've done like every medium except really acrylic actually no i did acrylic too but my favorite is colored pencils <laughs> nice yeah because it's easiest i would love to work in oils um, I have, but again, as I told you all, I, I haven't really taken classes for this. So when I started working with oils, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to make a birthday gift for a friend. Um, <laughs> I'm a really heavy painter. So I use a lot of product. I was, oh no, <laughs> I didn't know that it didn't dry very fast. Acrylic dries very quickly so I can pile it on. And I was, we weren't even friends anymore by the time this painting dried. <laughs> um, I just dropped it off at their door, knocked and ran because I painted oh it for them because the, I painted so thick and so heavy. And I love the way that oil looks because it looks wet. Well, mine was wet for months, for wow. months and months and months. But um, it is something that I want to play with again. I just know I have to play with it a little differently, but everything was like trial and error in all the art that I do. I'm just like, eh. And, you know, it it dried eventually. Well, I assume it was dry. It was dry to the touch, maybe not underneath, but it was dry to the touch. So, you know, I just play around with all kinds of different things. I put salt in my paint um, just because I, I wanted it to feel different. Um, I wasn't sure what it would do to the paint. Um, I still have that paint. I did that like right when I started painting years and years ago. Um, so it still has that feeling, but I noticed that it 
it, well, I think what it did was discolor or help discolor some of the paint that I used, but I don't actually mind that either. I did another painting and I used um, a varnish. I had never used a varnish before and it clouded my entire painting um, after I finished it. And I was like, well, guess this painting's called Angels in the Mist. And I just rolled with it, you know, it was, it was cloudy. I was like, that, I guess that's what it was supposed to look like. So I, I just use whatever, touch whatever, figure out whatever I want in the moment and see if I like it. And if I don't, I can always paint over it or rip it up and use it in some other interesting way. Although I rarely do that because I, I have a thing about watching the progression of art. Um, I have in the past a couple of times just changed directions entirely. And so I do that. It's, I'll like stop completely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like, nope, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> but then it's so fun. I don't throw those things away. I come back to them and I see mm. where I was and change it up. I'm also a writer. So mm -hmm. I save all these little scraps of paper that I start writing on. And, and then I come back to it and I'm like, oh, that's a great beginning of a poem. And that's a great end of a poem. And maybe I can shove them together and make something else. Or how wonderful is it that in this moment I was in this space and now I'm so far removed from it and I can mm -hmm. come with a different perspective. And that goes for visual and writing that I can come with a different perspective and add to it differently. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a big proponent of don't throw it away. Let it sit, come back to it two days, three days, a week, a year, five years and see what you can make of it where you are now. You can watch your growth on a paper or on a canvas. That's a beautiful thing. Also, one of the things that I love to do with this kind of art um, is you can you can cut it up, right? You, it started out as a full sheet of something and maybe you decided to, to cut it into fours or maybe you decided to cut around the black and mosaic it with something else or just use that little piece in something else. So it becomes all sorts of different things. Um, I've used the, this type of art um, to make cards and signs, um, like celebratory signs for people and, you know, cut up some of the pieces or wrapping things. How special would it be to get hand done wrapping paper or right. a background to something that doesn't look like anything else. I, I love being able to do that. So I'll cut around and make all these shapes. And maybe I won't even use the lines. Maybe I'll just make new shapes and cut and stick it on something and create something entirely new. So there's so many different ways to use this um, and create differently. Paper around. I think that's a cool idea. I definitely want to use some of like make more of these and use them as like holiday wrapping for like mm -hmm. presents. You can do it all year long and by the time Christmas comes you have all sorts of stuff. It yeah. could be the present, it could be the wrapping paper, it could be the background. It could be um, for those of you that like to um, like make jewelry. Paper jewelry is really fun and easy to make. And how pretty would this be? And it'd be one of a kind, right? Nobody's gonna have whatever this is. So you could make your paper necklace, your paper beads with this paper and come up with a very unique product. Um, laminate it and make it into something else. So 
perfect for the holiday season for those of us on a budget. I don't know about you all, but I definitely am on a budget. So I I use this kind of stuff to fill in or to um, create something completely one of a kind for people. You could literally just wrap it around a box and the box be the gift because it's so different and beautiful. And then people, uh, I'll speak for me. I love like boxes and bags and things like that. Um, so for me, it, a pretty box or an interesting thing that I could display is, is really great. Uh, I had a friend make me a photo box and she wrapped it in something, but I could totally see wrapping it in something like this with like some decoupage and having something completely one of a kind that is its own gift, even though there was stuff inside the box. So we have about nine minutes left. I don't know if anybody else is brave enough to, to showcase their art. Sometimes this takes a little bit of time, um, but uh, I would say, especially your first go around, oh, and depending on how detailed you got, um, it could take a couple hours. But when I'm unwinding, that's a really great way to do some unwinding. Is you know, sit in front of the TV, pull out my my <laughs> markers, and unwind that way. So you might be halfway through. You might be three quarters of the way through. You might be a quarter of the way through. It's all fine, but I would love to see what some of you all have. I can share mine. Oh, that's so pretty. I love it. Thank you. Change me. Oh, yeah. So that's going to be what you're doing right now. It's going to be really easy to do the outlines on. Mm -hmm. And what you end up with is going to be really fantastic as far as the the end look because the all your pieces are so close together it's gonna and the black is gonna identify those shapes differently it's gonna be really cool mm -hmm. i actually ended up drifting away from drawing the shape first and started just drawing lines that are creating shapes yep it's all good any way you get there close your eyes and hit the paper with the marker and something will pop up and you can use that as a beginning. What I love about this art is that like, it's so fearless. It's like, there's a lot, and, and it's weird, like, like experience of doing it. There's a lot of fear of judgment, right? Yep. But so through the process, you're learning how we've been boxed in to these lines. And you just get to let it all go. Yes. Show up however you want. I can share mine. Mine's like rainbow. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm you said choose four colors, but I couldn't choose, so I just chose all of them. <laughs> except, except brown. But maybe I'll use brown too. Again, it, the, those rules are loose. Um, so I think it's great. And I also challenge people to look at their piece at the end and and really think about why did I use those colors? What do those colors mean to me? What does it bring up for me? Um, or those shapes or the the things that I'm seeing in the picture. Um, you, you're speaking to yourself sometimes and you could learn a lot about yourself if you take the moment and and dissect what you're seeing, what your subconscious is letting out. Um, the way that I really got into art was I, I have always written. I'm a poet and a songwriter. And I was so depressed at a point in my life, I couldn't write anymore. I couldn't look at the words. And I was bursting at the seams with all these emotions and I didn't know how to get rid of them. And my brother, knowing that I'm a creative, he asked me to come over and help him paint something. I was like, well, I don't paint, but okay, whatever. And so we painted some stuff at his house. And then he gave me the rest of the paint and some canvas. And I brought it back to my house and 
decided one day to just paint something and I didn't know what I was doing. And he had all sorts of materials that I had never used before. And I just kind of did whatever I wanted. And at the end, I felt after I looked at it, that everything that I had been wanting to say that I've been going through, that I've been struggling with showed up on that canvas. And I knew exactly what every piece meant. And it was so emotional and it was such an emotional release. I, I tell my brother to this day, I was like, you saved my life. The art saved my life. And it was the beginning of me painting, which allowed me to speak when I couldn't write anymore. It allowed me to let all that stuff out. And I've had several offers to sell that piece. I'll never sell that piece because it is my breakthrough um, into art differently. And I, I realized that I'm telling my own story. I'm telling myself things. I'm revealing things to myself if I take the time to look at it and think about it and break it down. So I know it's just markers and paper today, but you might be speaking to yourself. So take a look, look at the colors, mm -hmm. look at the, the lines and the, the softness or the hardness, the clashing of the colors or the harmonious um, things that you're feeling when you look at the colors. And you, you might realize some things about yourself or be releasing something. So mm -hmm. I know it's a little hippy dippy, but it's it's my oh, I love it. it's my truth. It's I and I if anybody knows me, they know that I'm authentic and I don't say stuff just to put words into the atmosphere. I absolutely believe art is healing, it is life giving, it is personal, and it is public. And we are all artists. I'm really thankful that everybody who showed up decided to take this time. I know it's really hard for adults to make time to be creative because they think it a lot of times people think creativity and art is frivolous um I don't agree with that statement but I know a lot of people do and it's hard to get out of your own head and your own way because of all the years of conditioning to tell all of us unless you do it this way you're wrong you're not an artist whatever but uh I don't believe that and you all are proving that by sitting down and doing what you're doing right now. So thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope that you got something out of it. I know I was running my yap the whole time, but since I can't see a lot of people, um, it's a little weird. So <laughs> it's all good. I Thank started you doing so much more, before, Ronnie. So. We, we I hope that you got what you wanted out of it. We truly appreciate you for sharing your story and like teaching us how to be fearless for this hour <laughs> and to not be afraid because I that's what I got out of it. Um, if, if for those that are comfortable, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a quick screenshot. If you want to share your art of what you've done um, and just hold it up and then let me see if I can try to hold mine up while I like do a screenshot here. Oh my gosh, you're so great. They're so different. Oh my I gosh, love it. I love it. I love it. Amazing. I think it's gonna be awesome. Amazing work. Hold on. If anyone else wants to release, ooh, I like that. I like that. This is what I love the most is that look at, we all started with the same materials. And we're all so different and amazing differently. Mm -hmm. I, I love, love it. This. Thank you all for being Beautiful. brave and artists. And I hope that you continue to explore art. This is just one style, but there's so many things you can get into. Um, art doesn't just happen with paint and a brush. Um, it can happen with your pencil. It can happen with your words. It can happen with hair. Um, check out some hair artists. They're pretty amazing. I'm just going to say that. Um, find your medium. Speak your truth. Live your life free and without borders and boundaries. So um, thank you again. I appreciate it.
Thank you, Maharani. Have a great night, everyone. We hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. I'll be um, emailing out a survey um, shortly, probably around tomorrow. So, oh, everyone, okay, everyone's gone.